In this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to use proportional editing in Blender. Now, if you're a Blender beginner and you want to learn all the basic fundamentals of Blender, then definitely check out my Blender for Complete Beginners tutorial series. Link is in the description. So proportional editing is a very useful modeling tool, and it's especially useful for more organic modeling. So to enable it, you can click on this button right up here in the 3D viewport. That'll turn on the proportional editing. The shortcut key is the O key, so you can press the O key to toggle it on and off. And the proportional editing will work in both object mode and edit mode. So if I turn it on in object mode, but then change it over here to edit mode, you can see it's turned off in edit mode. So I could turn it on in edit mode. So just for an example here, I have all these different sphere objects and I'm going to start by using it in object mode. So I'll select one of the spheres and I'll turn on the proportional editing. I'll now hit the G key to move the sphere. And you can see that what the proportional editing is doing is it's pulling along the other spheres, which are nearby the object, which is selected. And the proportional editing works for all of of the transforms so you can scale objects you can rotate objects or you can move objects now you can see when you are transforming an object like in this case i'm moving a sphere you can see that there's a little circle here around the position of the object and this circle here is the boundary of the proportional editing so basically anything which is in the circle will be affected but then anything outside of the circle won't be affected that is why when i move this object the other spheres which are close by will move along with it but the other objects won't so when i am transforming an object object, whether I'm rotating it, scaling it, or moving it, I can scroll my mouse wheel and that'll change the size of the proportional editing. So the circle is bigger, so you can see more of the objects are now being pulled along because the circle is bigger, or if I make it really small, now just the objects which are nearby are going to be pulled along. And you also might have noticed that objects which are really close to the selected object will be pulled along a lot more, but then objects which are farther away, like this object here, will be pulled along a lot less. So it'll be less and less strong as it gets farther away from the circle. Now you can use the proportional editing in object mode like I am in this case, but I mainly use the proportional editing in edit mode. So I'm going to turn off the proportional editing in object mode and I'll just delete these objects and I'm going to add an icosphere and then right behind me on the icosphere settings I will subdivide it so it's very high detail and then I'll go into edit mode. So in edit mode I'm going to hit the O key to turn on the proportional editing. And if I select a vertex and move it along, you can see that the vertices are gonna be pulled along instead of the objects because we are in edit mode. So this would be really useful if maybe you're modeling like a egg object, you could select a vertex here on the top and hit G to grab, move it up on the Z axis, and you could make nice smooth editing. So now we have a basic egg shaped object. This is also very useful for more organic modeling. So for example, if you have a character face and let's say that you wanted to move the chin up, well, if I have the proportional editing turned off, I would have to like select some of the vertices here and like pull them up. But then you can see that there's kind of some sharp edges here and it's getting all messed up. So using the proportional editing, I can just select a vertex nearby. I'll hit G to grab and I can just pull the entire chin up just like that, and it's nice and smooth, so things don't get messed up, everything moves nice and smoothly. Now, if you click on the proportional editing dropdown, there are different types of falloffs, and the default one is smooth. So this one, if I hit G to grab and move it up, you can see it's going to be very smooth, and the vertices which are farther away at the end of the circle, they're gonna be affected less, but then the vertices which are very close into the center will be pulled along a lot more. However, there's some other settings, so I could change it to sphere, and this is gonna be kind of similar Similar, but you can see it's pulling around more of the vertices which are in the circle and then let's go to another one let's choose the sharp here so now if I pull this up you can see it's going to be very sharp now it kind of looks like a water droplet shape I could also change it to constant instead and what constant will do is it will just pull around the vertices which are inside the circle anything which is outside of the circle won't be affected at all but then everything else will be affected all the way then there's also this cool random one here so if I select the random and then pull them up you can see each object is being moved around by a random amount. So all of the vertices are being moved up on the z-axis, but some of them are being moved up more and other ones are being moved up less. And this option can be really useful if you want to model a landscape. So I'll go to the add menu here and add a plane. I'll go into edit mode and I'll press control E and I'll click on subdivide and I'll just continue to subdivide it many times. So now in edit mode, I'm going to turn on the proportional editing and I'll just use the smooth type and I can select some vertices and hit G to grab 
tab and I'm just going to make like some little hills. And then if I want to make the landscape bumpy, I could click on the drop down here and change it to random and I'll select a vertex kind of in the center. I'll hit G to grab and I can scroll my mouse wheel so the proportional editing is really big and then just click to place that there. So now if I go back to object mode and shade this object smooth, you can see we have now have a nice bumpy landscape. Now there's another option here on the proportional editing, which is connected only. So normally if I have this object here, this is actually one object. So I've joined two cubes together. If I select the corner of the cube and hit G to grab and move it, you can see all the vertices are being pulled along. However, these vertices here are actually connecting. So if I click on the drop down and choose connected only, now if I select this cube, select a vertex there and hit G to grab, you can see I can pull the one cube around, but the other cube isn't actually connected with the geometry so it's not going to be affected. So that's very useful for many things when you're modeling. However, if I select a vertex and shift select another vertex and press F to fill it, now the two meshes are filled with an edge there. So if I select a vertex, hit G to grab, you can see they're both going to be pulled along. Now the last setting here is this projected from view. So to show you what the projected from view does, I have two icospheres here. And so for this first one, I will turn the projected to view off. So I'll select a vertex, I'll hit G to grab, and I'll drag this way out and just kind of pull it out a lot like that. And then for the second one, I'll do the same thing. However, for this one, I'm gonna turn the projected from view on. And I'll hit G to grab and pull this way out. Now if I go back to object mode and look at both of them, you can see with this one, it only kind of selected the top part. However, with the projected to view on, it grabbed the top part of the mesh and the the bottom part of the mesh and it kind of pulled it all out. So this might be useful for a few things. I've never really used it, but just keep that in mind when you're using proportional editing. So that is how you use proportional editing in Blender. It's a very useful feature for organic modeling. And if you're a beginner to Blender and you like to learn all the basic fundamentals of Blender, definitely check out my Blender for Complete Beginners tutorial series. The link to that is in the description. And to watch more Blender quick tips, you can check out my Blender quick tips tutorial playlist. So I hope you found this helpful and thank Thank you for watching.